is Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I build four-wheel trucks and travel to the remotest parts of the world. I'm a prisoner of this hill. We have woken on board the Silver Fox, a houseboat on Lake Kariba in northern Zimbabwe. This brief watery excursion is part of an expedition to find close encounters with wild animals in Africa. Well, we've all had a reasonably comfortable night. Uh, I was quite envious of Jeremy, really, because he found a place out here on the deck. And so now, drinking our coffee and watching the colours change as the sun comes up. We arrived last night in the most glorious sunset I think I've ever seen. From Kariba, we've crossed the water to a mooring on an island about an hour from base. Today we are very much in the hands of our captain. He's going to take us to uh, one of the islands where he believes there'll be uh, some good game spotting. We might do some fishing. We've basically got a very relaxing day uh, to do what we want. So what's happening now, the, uh, the tender's gone out, it's not actually towing us out, it's just gone out for wait for us and um, uh, the captain is using the reverse engines to reverse us slowly out of our little inlet. It's about three hours across the lake to our chosen mooring spot on Palm Island. On the way we can watch the commercial traffic on Kariba. These are Kapenta fishing boats. Kapenta being a small fish that is dried and mostly turned into fish meal. <clears throat> Official log of ship Silver Fox, Lake Kariba, 18th July, 2018 at sea. <coughs> well this is the little cabin. Uh, this is a 12 berth boat but it is uh, really only suitable for six to be comfortable. Um, cabins are basic, facilities are pretty basic. It is air conditioned for the summer months and you have a rather lovely view. We have arrived at Palm Bay. This will be our camping spot, as it were, from where we will use the tender to fish and go sightseeing. So lunch has arrived. 
relaxing day working on our photographs and our video footage and eating what looked like samosas and fish cakes. I didn't expect lunch. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, I wasn't either, but it's perfect. Extremely welcome. Mm. The choices are fishing, sightseeing, or game viewing. Or sightseeing and game viewing. I think we'll do that. But it's very quickly With turned into a photographic excursion. Okay. Yeah, really good. Shallow focus and lots of out of focus trees, and then one perfect yep. in focus, something like that, black and white. Yeah. Ah, yes, I remember doing this before. <clears throat> trying to film wild animals from a moving boat. The name Hippopotamus comes from the ancient Greek for river horse. By this, and looking at the Hippopotamus, I have to assume and conclude that ancient Greek people had very poor eyesight. Oh, it's impossible. I suppose your license is being closed because they go wherever they want. The light is changing fast, so I've asked Freddy, our captain, to take us to the dead trees that decorate Kariba's shoreline. They should make for some amazing photography. Well, we came out this evening to do some fishing and we had an incredibly successful afternoon having not caught a single fish but got some superb photographs. That's what I call a good day's fishing. Well that there is the view at daybreak out of my cabin window. Uh, the guys here on the Silver Fox have been wonderful. The captain, Freddy, and the, um, the cook uh, and helper, Michael, uh, have been fantastic. The food has come out of a, a little tiny little kitchen which is part of the, 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 the bridge. Has been, they have been fantastic meals, really well, well prepared. This is no ordinary, this is a chef, really, he might not have a white cap, but he's a chef, the food has been really good. Um, it's comfortable, yeah, it's pretty basic, and um, that's fine for a small group, the, the Silver Fox can carry up to six packs, um, uh, well, six berth, it can carry 12, but it's six people can uh, sleep comfortably on her. Uh, they have a sister a boat called the Calypso, which is more luxurious. And I like the idea that we've supported a, a Zimbabwean businessman. And uh, I encourage you to do the same if you're going to come on to Kariba. Um, the experience has been brilliant. Kariba itself is really something. It really is. Um, and what a way to take a break from the road. It's getting rough. We're heading back to Kariba town now uh, to disembark and um, Captain Freddy has said about a five, five and a half hour trudge through the, uh, we've almost not quite a headwind, that's the, uh, the wind there. So um, this, uh, this is a a very big body of water, Kariba. So you get quite a, it fetches up quite a, just make sure I don't fall overboard. 
that's priority number one at this moment it fetches up quite a uh, a wave height whatever the marine people call it we're on Lake Kariba which forms the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia and far northern Zimbabwe and we are headed back to Kariba uh, and back into Zimbabwe and then on to Namibia at some point um, but we are we've been on the water for a couple of days actually staying on this boat the Silver Fox and it's been really really nice had a phenomenal photo shoot last night and off we go to the next part of our trip Mana pools tonight and then on to all kinds of other fun anyway uh, fun to be on a boat in Africa not what I expected really nice coming alongside is Casaro Casaro is Silver Fox's sister ship and we've been invited on board yeah. thank you sir you're welcome good morning how are you? good good how are you doing I'm very well good good how was your brief excursion? Very nice. Uh, sure. Really, yeah. really good. <laughs> really uh, nice. I'm going to get that for you. So, um, the Caterpillar, 320 horsepower each, we have both. And the generator is polar 20k VA, and we have inverter 10k VA, which means we have the generator during the day, and then switch off, and during the night, we have the inverter. So that means we have power 24-7. Uh, as much as I would like to think so uh, this is not our next stop this is actually Silver Fox's sister ship Kassara and it would be very easy for me to just chill out for another couple of days we're not going to do that Silver Fox is about the basic fun of houseboats on Kariba it's enormous amount of fun the food's good there's I have nothing but praise about it but of course if you want to spend a bit more money and have a little bit more comfort well there is a good alternative and if you're watching this on YouTube, look below for the details of these two ships. They're operated by local Zimbabwean businessmen. And as far as I'm concerned during my travels in this part of the world, I like to support local industry. Quick back up after the boat ride. We're gonna head now further east to a place called Mana Pools on the Zambezi River. While the view of the dam wall isn't that great, a good moment to pick up some travel mementos. Can you show me? Very nice. The route to Mana Pools consists of asphalt and a good gravel track, taking us about three hours. This is Mana Pools National Park, and I had to stop to show you this. Unbelievable, the trees in this park are superb and they have them some of the most astonishing baobabs that you'll find anywhere and there was another reason to stop but we'll just talk about trees for now to stop for a while and the, the flies clinging to the car and I found one on my finger and here it is here this is a tsetse fly they carry sleeping sickness cattle and um, they are not really harmful to humans although they give quite a painful sting um, and they're quite hard to kill they're very hardy things uh, no longer dangerous to humans sleeping sickness can easily be cured but it still decimates cattle wherever it's found we took a chance and did not pre-book our camping spot at Mana. Looks like we didn't need to. It's pretty empty. Mana Pools is one of Zimbabwe's... I was going to say best kept secrets, but it's not really a secret. A lot of people know about it. But not a lot of people come here because it's quite far out of the way. Not far from Kariba, about three hours. 
right, this is the Zambezi River, across there, that's Zambia, across the river, and game here abounds. And what is fantastic about it, it is one of the very few places in Zimbabwe, I think maybe even the only place in Zimbabwe, where you can camp amongst the animals. There is no fence at all. So hopefully again, we are hopeful that we will have some close animal encounters tonight with a proviso that they are not baboons because the baboons here, well, they can make a mess of your campsite. But I'll leave you with the sunset. Zambezi River. Good morning once again. We wake up on the banks of the mighty Zambezi River. This is one of Africa's major rivers uh, flowing west to east. Um, that area over there is uh, Zambia. Those of you who know my films will remember in 2015 Kate and I visited the Lower Zambezi National Park. Well that's it and we set up camp on this piece of river opposite us. There are a lot of camps on the opposite side of the river, uh, mainly catering to fishing, tiger fishing on the, on the river. A, a magnificent, magnificent camping spot and place to experience wild animals. In fact, last night in my tent, uh, half asleep, woken up by hyena, scratching around the tent, scratching around the camp, and I recorded a podcast right there and then which I kind of enjoyed doing because the animal sounds around me were absolutely terrific. It's time for some running repairs on the Land Cruiser. Now we've lost all our water out of the water tank and we suspect that it was the mouse that was trapped in here for about five days and we suspect that he ate his way through the pipe. Well we'll soon find out if it's a simple matter of rattling having caused the pipe to come off or something like that or the blasted mouse but I am absolutely astonished that mana pools yep. is empty astonishing for July high season in mana and I think it's got a lot to do with Zimbabwe people the whole turmoil of Zimbabwe the ousting of of Mugabe and the the, the and you know something and I need to say this with a loud loud voice things have changed not one roadblock, not we, we saw police at once, friendly, inviting, it's fantastic. You've got to come back to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is not its old self. It's not the kind of place you used to come through and you're always worried about roadblocks and corruption, police like that. There's, we haven't seen even the smallest evidence of that. All we are seeing is empty space. Kariba, hardly any boats on Kariba. Here, nobody camping here. People are scared. I, there's nothing to be scared of anymore. And in fact, I heard that the 
um, Minister of uh, Tourism went to the Minister of Police and said if you don't stop your men on the ground hassling tourists we will never get a revival of the tourism industry that's what I heard ha ha happened I think that must have happened because it's been fantastic animals are far more active during the cooler parts of the day it's 3 p.m. so a good time to go out for a game drive Sometimes you find things when you're looking for a game that are just as beautiful, just as majestic. And these trees are uh, pretty epic. In a park like this, anytime you see them, it's because the elephants have knocked them down. And uh, when they're alive, they eat all the foliage on the trees. So the remnants of a time when the elephants have come through. This entire kind of valley we're sitting in this park is full of pushed over trees that are dead and have all kinds of characters. So kind of a neat, neat thing to look at as well as the animals. Tricky bit is that uh, we're in the middle of a very wild park. And while it doesn't seem like anything's going on, you've really got to be cautious of predators and anything around that might want to take a bite out of you so that's why Andrew's looking around Tech Pro loaned us the vehicles for this trip they are a company offering high specification four-wheel drive vehicles for Africa overland trips in the self-drive style their idea is luxury overlanding comfort everything is included but it's not just a rental it also includes trip planning trip advice the whole package now from my point of view the vehicle that I've taken on this trip it's the first trip it's ever been on so we've helped them with a few ideas a few modifications a few improvements and now that vehicle and this one will be ready for rental but I do have a little bit of advice on which vehicles to choose. It comes in two basic configurations and I'm not just talking about the tent. That tent is the Alucab Gen 3 suitable for two people. Preferably two people that are quite close because it's a bit cramped in there. It's very comfortable, very quick to get up, very quick to pack up and so the convenience is wonderful. This has a traditional, it's more spacious but it takes a lot more effort to put up and put away. The configuration in the back is important. This is a mess because we're actually using it, we're actually camping, but this is the flatter configuration. If you are thinking about four people, you're going to need a ground tent as well as the rooftop tent. They offer that as part of the package. I would recommend the flat configuration, otherwise you might just find that you don't have enough space for all your stuff. So be specific ask for the flat configuration. If however there are two of you I would recommend or either or will work for you but one of the options is the fully kitted out back end. This is for example the kitchen fridge and this is more convenient but there's less space. This setup is not suitable for four people purely because there's just simply not enough space in the back to put all your stuff once all the camping equipment is in. So again, if there's just two of you, this is a great choice. The wheel carriers, the spare wheels, the inverters, pretty much the same along the line. And I, with any of these vehicles, you're going to have an enormous amount of fun. They're extremely capable vehicles very very reliable and well for now in 2018 of course everything is brand new so you'll be getting a new new truck with new kit and there they are they, there are a total 
of approximately eight vehicles in the fleet and these are two of them. The Zambezi River. It's an incredible waterway. This is as far as we will get from our starting point, which was in Rintuk, the capital of Namibia. From now, we head back to Rintuk to drop off the vehicles. The trip will take us about nine days. And uh, the route we're going to take back home, yet to be decided. We're on a game viewing drive. The light is beautiful. The clouds are just exquisite. Monopoles is a is a really truly beautiful area. And right now, perfect time to see and photograph some wild animals. Here, I got his whole ugly head. Very difficult doing this kind of photography in animal parks where you're not allowed to get out of the vehicle. You have to actually rig up something and photograph scenes like this from the from inside the vehicle because one is not allowed to get out of the vehicle. That's what I love about these many of the parks that we visited on this trip. You, you know it's it's just a wonderful to just experience this kind of this kind of scene. It really is magic. This is one of the four pools that Mana Pools is named after. And we won't get close to the water because you can be sure that there are lots of crocodiles here. In the next episode, my tent gets raided. I think Monkey's got in your tent. But I zipped it up. We critique some camping gear. What am I going to do with the other two eggs? Explain yourself, please. And get very close to some animals. Get so close. Support the making of these videos by supporting me on Patreon.